Bruno Carpaccio has been around mailers that have came, that have came out in this particular race. And unfortunately, Chad has no control over some of that. I certainly have no control over some of that. There were some positive mailers sent out on my behalf that I had no idea they were coming. Thank you. Good question. Uh, well, uh, this is not, if, if I'm victorious, this will not be my constituency. This will be your constituency. I uh, will meet with business owners and, uh, uh, this is our constituency, District 9. Uh, Mr. Thompson sent out a really nice mailer a month or so ago saying, you want a, uh, you want a representative who cares about you and not about the pockets of the billionaires who fund him. And my first reply to that was, who are these billionaires? And uh, I think he means the Koch brothers. But, uh, you know, I've never met the Koch brothers. Brothers, if I saw them on the street out here, they wouldn't know me. Uh, this is our constituency. I will meet with you personally, business leaders, everybody, teachers, education, health care, and I will do what is best for District 9. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Madhouse. Ms. Brown, this question will be yours first. But question 7 is What are your ideas for bringing industry into Southwest Kansas? That's pretty much the same thing. I will, if elected, I will work with the city and county commissioners and this chamber of commerce to bring jobs to District 9. Well, how do you bring jobs? That's a wonderful question. You know, there's, from a the government, philosophically, you know, there's a lot of things, people that think that you have to buy those jobs in the form of maintenance or, or, you know, basic government giveaways to attract the jobs to your community. Um, you know, we have a perfect example that even affects us up right here in the 9th District, and you really wouldn't think so. Um, quite honestly, I voted um, in the state of Kansas legislature this past year, I voted to not repeal the RPS. The RPS is a renewable portfolio standard. And by the way, I received a flyer because I like that these abilities on that one, but um, it's good policy. It's good policy. In the state of Kansas, we have the second most wind capability of any state in the union. We currently get 19.4% of our electric usage from renewable energy or wind energy. Why does that matter? We don't have any windmills in, in the 9th district. Well, it does matter in the 9th district. Uh, there's a company here working in the voice 75 local people. You know, that's a positive to me, and it's in the 9th District. The, the two cement manufacturing, which there's only two in the entire state, they're both located in House District Number 9, they both told me factually that they provide cement for the base of all these windmills. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever put a corner post in the ground, but it's not so much what's above the ground, it's what's below the ground that hold, holds corner post in place. A tower is the same way. Most towers take three to 400 cubic yards of cement to provide a base to, to be able to hold the windmill in place. To me, my time is up. Thank you. 15 seconds. Pardon? Yeah, 15 seconds. Sorry. To me, that's a positive thing. How, did, how could we have 10 years ago said, gosh, how can we do a jobs bill in Southeast Kansas that really doesn't affect Southeast Kansas in a sense that the windmills aren't here? This is a perfect example. That has happened. There's a job right here in the 9th district because of that particular industry. So, and besides the fact that they have created 12,000 jobs statewide. Thank you. Thank you. President Thompson, uh, this question will be yours first at this time. Uh, more industry calls for well qualified employees. What are your ideas for attracting and building a stronger workforce in Southeast Kansas? Well, obviously, that goes to education. Um, I think our educational system in the last few years has, has done a better job of, of identifying that there are vocational programs, there are technical type programs. Not every child is going to attend college, but every child deserves an education and a preparedness to have a successful life. Some of those folks or some of these people that, that choose to take advantage of the vocational training, that's a wonderful life skill set these people have learned. They can be productive members of society. We all can, all of our students can. But we have to, as an educational system, as a community, as a state, we have to continue to provide that type of training. Um, the, the, the,
college ready kids are probably going to be okay, but we have to teach every kid in our school district. That that touches on the on the side of the qualification of them. What are your ideas for attracting and building a stronger workforce? Obviously, people have to be responsible. People have to show up. You know, we're really somewhat fortunate in the ninth district that we do have some manufacturing. Um, it's nice that we have those jobs for people. Um, agriculture, agriculture is the largest industry in the state of Kansas, always has been. But to make strong communities, you need other jobs. And agriculture does not require that many man hours anymore. Um, you know, 100 years ago, it took 20 people to run a farm. Today, it can be done with one or two people. Thank you. Mr. Van Howen, uh, question eight is uh, Well, I'm going to say it again. Uh, I will work with the city and county commissioners and the, and the Chamber of Commerce to bring back jobs back to District 9. And uh, Mr. Thompson said something about how he supports renewable energy. And just want to say, uh, Harvesting the wind requires much land, highly technical equipment, and long transmission lines to move the energy from rural areas to the urban areas. Conventional electric generation must still be used to back up the wind energy. The Kansas Corporation Commission is not accounted for the expense of backing up wind and any unaccounted for cost and government subsidization of wind energy. And wind energy is expensive. The wind energy in Kansas, its existence and survival is purely political in nature. It exists only because of government mandate and significant government subsidy. It's not free. It's not simple. It's expensive for District 9. And it will cost every business and home a 15% increase in the electric bills. <laughs> so all work with uh, chamber members, business leaders, to get more business here. But Wind energy obviously is not the way to get energy here. Thank you. Mr. Van Howen, this question will be yours first. Question nine. What will be your top priorities as a state representative for District 9? Please be as specific as possible. Well, I'm a conservative Republican. Uh, I support pro life issues. I've always been pro life, pro family, and pro jobs. So I want to get jobs here. You know, I want to talk to business owners talk to the chamber, figure out how to get more jobs here. We keep local control of schools. We know how to control our schools the best, so keep it local. And uh, finally, I just want to say I have no agenda for running for this position except for improving District 9. Thank you. Representative Thompson, your question? Top priorities. Well, I think my top priorities is to go to go to Topeka, educate myself as well as I can on each and every subject. Um, certainly will never be an expert on every every topic. We took 286 votes in the Kansas House of Representatives this year. I was not an expert in any one of those fields. But my job is to listen to experts on both sides of every issue and make the best decision I can possibly make to bring home the 9th District or to represent the best interest of the 9th District. Um, that's what a representative should be, by very definition of the word. I represent you. It's not my personal opinions. Obviously, I have them. But my job, and, as, and especially to be an effective representative, is to listen to what you, you want me to listen to. Um, that's about it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now move on to uh, question 10. It will be yours first, if it's possible. The difficulty. A difficulty in encouraging investments in historic buildings is the cost of property tax. This is especially true for older downtown buildings that are a vital success for rural communities. Do you have any suggestions of how the repurposing of older buildings could be made more attractive to developers? To to retrofit or to refit older buildings, I guess is not the question. Re re service. Okay, and the, and the question is the cost of property taxes. There's cost of property taxes on every piece of property, <laughs> whether it's old or new. Um, you know, I, I love history. I love historical things. I love historical properties. Um, it's something that, that we never replace. If we don't take advantage of opportunities we have to restore these type of properties, once they're gone, they're gone. Um, I, that, that's a concern to me. 
Um, you know, there's grant programs through the, through the Kansas Department of Commerce and Secretary George. There's programs that, that and in fact, that I believe the uh, student hospital I read online a couple of days ago is actually working with that grant program. Um, there's actually, they're actually trying to, I believe, work on some medical um, equipment in the hospital, but there are grants available. There are, there are methods to be able to refurbish these downtown buildings and not only downtown, but all historical properties. Um, I personally would, would encourage that if that's something that, that owners ownership wants, if that's something that the county, excuse me, the city wants, and it's what the people want. There are tools in place to be able to have, have assistance with that. Obviously, there's a concern that you know once your once your label is historic, there's some restrictions, some concerns that has to be has to be done in a period of manner. There's other uh, regulations on that, and that's a, that's sometimes a slippery slope. Um, but certainly I would always be in favor of, of encouraging any type of program that would help the restoration of those properties. Thank you. Mr. Val, I have a question to Yes, sir. Well, we need to work together. We need to stop pending up well. Uh, keep the properties tax low. We need to stop depending on renewable energy. It's a drive up 15%. We need to show prospective business leaders are our best assets in this town. What are our best assets? We have some brand new schools. Our middle school's newly renovated. Hospital brand new. We got a brand new swimming pool. The list goes on and on. So show the business leaders our best assets that we can support a company like that. Thank you. Uh, our final question, prior to going to your closing comments, and question 11, what you, Mr. Van Howland, to your first. It says, what are the motiv motivating factors in your decision to run for District 9 state representative or to run for re-election? Well, I've known Mr. Ebdo since 1993, 1994. I was in the sound of music with his daughters, and uh, we did it right here on this stage. And so ever since then, I've been really close to this family. So when he passed away, it was really, it was really something. Um, when uh, in the year 2000, when Bush and Gore had their little elections back, recounts, uh, that kind of got my interest started. Um, but I always left politics on the back burner. And I said it'd be something I'd do in 10 years. Uh, then I said, Mr. Bedell passed a year and a half ago. And uh, I, in passing one day, I told somebody, you know, this might be something I'd like to do 10 years down the road. And uh, last spring, April and May, they came to my office and said, 10 years is fine, but the time is now. So, right. when I'm talking to my wife, praying about it, and uh, here I am. It is time. So, thank you. What was my motivating factor? Um, my motivating factor comes from 12 years serving as a county commissioner and seeing what state level politics and unfunded mandates do to local units of government. That is where my motivation comes from. Uh, serving in that time, and in fact, I think Mr. Ben Allen was nice enough to point out that Kent Thompson did all this by himself. Uh, um, I'd like to actually let, let people understand how these numbers get to be. Just so you know, in this time period that Mr. Van Houten is talking about from 97 to 2009, the state eliminated four or five things and pushed that property tax burden down to local level. One was LABTR, local ad valorem tax reduction. In one year, the state of Kansas cut $680,000 out of the Allen County budget when I was a commissioner. They didn't take credit for raising your taxes, they let the locals take credit for raising your taxes. In 2006, they removed machinery and equipment from, from the local tax rolls, from tax rolls altogether. That was another burden on local government. Um, other extended costs and just inflationary costs on fuel and other items, that's what contributes to things like this. And I will tell you from being at the state building, they are not very friendly for local government. When I say local government, county commissions, municipalities and cities, they think we overtax, that the locals overtax. 
there's a few people in the building that come from a county background, they get the picture. They understand why you have to work with local government. Um, probably my biggest struggle was to try to work with people and explain that to them. But those are things that come down to local units of government through a period of time, through a, you know, an evolution, Mr. Ben Helen pointed out in the 12 years I was there, that was a great deal of anguish that I had to deal with those items. So my motivation is to be involved at the state level and be, be aware and cognizant of what those changes you do and how they affect local units of government. At this time, we'll transition to uh, the closing statements for the evening. Uh, we'll reverse the order. Uh, Mr. Van Houten, you'll be up first with your closing statements and then recommend the call. Well, I'm going to think that's a fight for this district. Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan once asked his audience in a debate with Jimmy Carter, are you better off today than you were four years ago? As I've gone door to door, I have heard your concerns of higher taxes, higher energy costs, and bigger government. So ask yourself, are you better off now than you were a year and a half ago? If I'm fortunate enough to be elected, I will go as a pink every member of three things, to be humble, to listen and learn, and to represent District 9 to the best of my abilities. Please vote August 5th for the candidates of your choice. There is still plenty of work to be done in Topeka. I've been there for a year, and with your vote of confidence, I would like to continue working on issues important to Southeast Kansas. I look forward to the questions and discussions, and I appreciate that everyone showed up this evening. I appreciate Mr. Van Houten being here. Um, I want you to know, if I am fortunate enough to be reelected, I will do the best job I can possibly do for, you, for the 9th District. I am not a person that owes anyone for the position. If if I'm there, I'm very free to have an open mind. I don't have to listen to the Kansas Chamber when they call my, my uh, number on the House floor. I don't have to have allegiance to any that. And quite honestly, to be completely honest or frank about it, that's the only way I will do this job. If I'm allowed to be an independent thinker, I, from what I saw with my own two eyes in this last session, that best serves you in the 9th District. You don't need someone there that is willing to go along with what they're told to do. You need someone with backbone that can stand up and will fight for the ninth district if that if that opportunity presents itself. With that said, I'm very humbled and honored and glad to be here. If you have any questions of me whatsoever, um, feel free to check with me this evening, or call me this evening, or any time, and I'll make myself available. Thank you again. Thank you. I want to thank the candidates for being here tonight for this evening. Uh, we appreciate both of you participating. We also want to thank uh, Ruth Ports. I want to thank the City of Chinook, uh, Chris Conklin, and uh, TV5. Uh, they're the ones that helped put all this together and hopefully put a little powder on my head before it goes out. <laughs> the Chamber is uh, very pleased to be able to put these type of programs together because we, we view it as a very important to keep our community informed. We hope that whether you're here in the crowd or out watching on TV, that most of all you'll analyze uh, what you've heard take the time to uh, read about it, and most of all, vote. And with a closing uh, quote that I've always enjoyed in quotes, uh, A.W. Tozer puts it this way, how far a man may have traveled is not important. What matters is whether or not he's going in the right direction. So I encourage you to vote, to analyze those type of things, and I appreciate you watching tonight, and have a good evening. Thank you.